you know, our son went down. He was in Florida. He was breaking up. Evening, everybody. Welcome. Hey. Welcome. Glad you're here. Really excited about that. Um, I'm Steve Monson. I'm one of the people who tries to figure out uh, what great programs to bring in here every month and uh, for Spirit on Tap. And so um, if you do not receive emails, please sign up. If you get them, you don't need to. Make sure you write so that uh, Harry can read it. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation, you get baskets. Uh, they are available, but also information you'll tell us about the next the next uh, gathering later. So uh, my job here is to read the ground rules. Oh, also, did you all give your uh, drivers your license plate to the front desk? I tried. Yeah, there's somebody said it's free. Three to from nine. three to nine. Six to nine. They said it was Six free. Nine. Oh, I tried. Okay. Well, that's fine. Free's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me, let me read the, uh, uh, basically the ground rules are, uh, be nice, but let me just read what we have. <laughs> Our purpose is to gather together in a setting where challenging and complex current cultural and religious faith issues are presented and discussed. We are not here to judge, but rather to create a safe space for significant conversation, and please be respectful of others and the views they express. There will be a presentation of about 45 minutes to an hour. The remainder of our time, uh, we stop at 8.30 at the latest, and will be used for questions and comments. Uh, while we want to encourage good discussion, please do not dominate the conversation to a point where others are unable to share their thoughts. Um, I will have a microphone, and when it's time for questions, I ask you to raise your hand, and we can one question at a time and let others uh, put their questions in and I'll bring that microphone to you. We believe if we can hold to this format, everyone can leave here enriched. We'd also like to thank uh, Doubletree for their generosity in offering us this venue for free. They sponsor us. Um, it's a great gift, and we are really grateful for that. Uh, we also uh, like to remind folks that we have the number one Hilton-related hotel in the world is here in Connecticut, and uh, that has to do with their wonderful staff and leadership. Uh, so now I want to introduce uh, Dr. Bob Stewart, who will introduce our speaker for the evening. Thank you, Steve. We were meeting ahead of time, and Steve said, we can, we can whittle down these round rules and say, don't be a schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> our speaker for this evening is an expert in clutter and junk, or crap, however you might want to put it. Uh, my wife and I have taken advantage of her expertise for several years now. After deciding to downsize from a 3,200 square foot single home with a two-car garage to a 1,695 square foot home with a single car garage, townhouse, uh, we needed to get rid of a lot of stuff and get organized. We're still working on that. Valley was and continues to be a godsend for us. She's a wizard with organizing and helping uh, make the difficult decisions to part ways with items that may be somewhat sentimental to you, but are no longer needed. Valley is also intensely conscious of recycling everything possible because she cares so much for the earth. The connection of clutter and a lack of focus has been made clear to us in our personal lives. I'm sure after you leave here tonight, you will have a new appreciation of what it means to get and stay organized. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for the evening, Valley Heist. Before you come up, I forgot one thing. She is very non-judgmental. So regardless of how crappy your place is, she's not going to say, oh, this is terrible. That's not her style. Valerie. Thank you so much, Bob. That was a little kind intro. <laughs> yes, and um, uh, before I started my business 17 years ago, I worked at Alvernia University. It was Alvernia College at the time. And I worked there for 24 years, uh, being the financial aid director, and worked for the uh, president of the college for five years. 
And I, I love working there. And I still consider myself part of the Albertian family. Even when somebody talks about it, I always say we. But I'm still not used to not saying they because I've lived there so long. But um, I started my business by reading a Red Book magazine article about, and I don't even get Red Book, I don't know where I even got that magazine. Um, <laughs> organizing business and I read through the whole thing and I got to the very end and I was at the time looking for um, another career because we had just hired a my, the sixth president since I had been in Alberta and I was the assistant to the president of the old regime so I, it was time for me to, to go. So I was looking for something else and when I read this I said this is me. I can do this. So I went right up to my computer, I did research. It, I didn't know there was such a thing as a professional organizer, so I uh, did a lot of research. There was no one that did that in our area. I talked to a lot of people, and 95% of the people said, no one's gonna ever pay you to do that in Berks County. <laughs> so I said, no, I think they might. Um, so I went to the national conference, and I, I walked in, and I, met my people, and uh, it just felt, I felt at home. So I've always been an organized person, but maybe not for the reason that you might think. Um, I'm an organized person so that I can get up as late as possible and still make it to work on time. <laughs> I can stay up as late as I want and still get a good night's sleep um, so I can travel as much as I want so I can do fun things so I can go to lunch. And when somebody says, do you want to go here? I can say yes and not give them an excuse of, oh, I have so much to do at home. I want to be organized so that I can live my life, so that I can have fun. My house is not perfect. And everybody says, oh, your house must be so perfect. <laughs> That's the worst word in the world. Uh, I, I didn't even allow that word when my son was small. I said, honey, nothing's perfect. So if he would ever use it, I said, yeah, but nothing's perfect. Um, even my house. Um, but if someone says, is it okay if I stop by in like 15 minutes? I say, of course it is. You know, because it should take me about 15 minutes to pick up the things that are just laying around because everything has a home and, it, and it's um, easy to pick up. And I think that's the, that's my ideal for an organized home. You can pick it up in 15 minutes uh, if somebody says they want to come over, or if they're at the door and never told you they were coming over, you have to block them. Just <laughs> you, you don't want to come. Yeah, uh, you don't want to come in right now. Um, and honestly, that's the way. That's the reason a lot of my clients call me. I can't have anybody over. I don't have people over anymore. So what they say, you know, things have gotten out of hand. I was ill for a number of years. Um, things just. I just stopped. I just stopped. Um, you know, either it was an illness or somebody in their home was ill, or they were taking care of someone else outside their home, hadn't really time for their own home. So um, that's what happens. The stuff keeps coming in, but nothing's getting put away or being taken out. So, um, and I think the judgmental thing is very much a, a, a part of why people don't call. Um, I'm embarrassed. I'm too embarrassed. Um, you're just not going to believe it when you see it. I looked at him and say that. And I said, you've seen nothing like this before. I said, I probably have. But, um, and when I get together with people that don't know me, and I tell them what I do, it, that used to happen when I was a financial aid director. They'd say, oh, you're in financial aid. Well, you know, they'd ask me how many questions about how they get money for school. Now, Oh, you're a professional. <laughs> okay, so what do I do with this? Or I use somebody who really needs your help when it's probably them that could probably use my help. They don't like to admit that. So um, it's one of the most humbling and uh, personal things that you can do with someone, especially if you're going into their home uh, after someone's passed away and they haven't touched their stuff yet. 
um, haven't even gone through their doors, uh, and I'm the first person to do that. So it's a real, um, when you have someone invite you, you into their space, and you're gonna look at their stuff and open their doors, I really want them to know that I really have, I, I really don't have any judgments. It is what it is, that's what I tell them. Let's just start where you are, and let's go forward. So, one of my favorite things is to just um, keep that uh, poker face on when I see as much as I see. Even if I'm inside, I'm going, oh my God, <laughs> can I do this? Um, I remember that, you know, in the first couple places that I worked at. But I also remember leaving with the check in my hand and saying, that was so much fun, I can't believe they just paid me to do that. <laughs> so I knew I was in the right profession. Uh, when I, I wrote for the Reading Eagle for 10 years, monthly, um, I had a column that um, gave me a lot of copy. Uh, and so I ended up writing a book because I had so much copy. The only reason I have a book is because there was a deadline and there was a number of word uh, maximum. So I had rules. Um, have it to us by this date, with this many words, and you can put it in once a month. And that was amazing because I loved to write. <coughs> uh, and it was something that just was a natural fit for me. So because of those uh, columns, I had enough copy to write a book. I also have enough copy to write two more books, but uh, I didn't need to do that. So I wrote this at a time when I was building my business and I had time. So, <clears throat> but, um, Many of my clients um, like Bob downsizing, um, and many of them are downsizing to leave. They're just downsizing to stay. And they're downsizing to say, we aren't going to leave our home. We've decided to stay, but we can't have this much stuff around, or it's not safe, or our kids are going to kill us if we have all this stuff. Um, um, there's a lot of um, children of my clients that say, well, we don't care what you, you know, you don't have to clean up for us. We're just going to pull up the dumpster <laughs> and throw it all out anyway. And then that's what gets them going because <laughs> they can't imagine there's stuff in the dumpster. Uh, they're good stuff. And, and frankly, when, when the children of parents have full-time jobs, they live out of state, they have to come in and, okay, you have how many weeks to clean this house out? And we have to get it sold. All of that is just it's too much. It's a time crunch. So they don't have time to be kind and to, to recycle and to donate. And so they end up throwing a lot of good stuff in the dumpster. That, of course, is horror to me because so much of what goes in our trash anyway is, is actually usable. And um, I've cleaned out houses where I know two or three years before this stuff was good, before it went moldy, or it was dried out, or it got wet, or it got, you know, it, it was good once, had it been uh, donated way back, but now it's not. So that's one of the reasons that I like my clients to think about downsizing, even though someone's not pushing them. Um, that it is, it, it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, so one of my uh, quotes, my book, uh, which is called Organize This, Practical Tips, Green Ideas, and Ruminations About Your Crap. <laughs> and crap stands for clutter that robs anyone of pleasure. And I came up with the word crap before I even became an organizer because on Black Fridays, my sister and I would go out shopping for Christmas, and uh, there was a lot more stuff out than, than normal in the aisles and in, the, in the, the kiosks, and there was just so much more crap during Christmas. And I, I called it Christmas crap. It was my my word. I go, here comes the Christmas crap, you know. So, uh, but then I realized when I started my business, it's a lot more than just Christmas crap. There's Easter crap. There's Halloween crap. There's there's just 
general path um, because it's so cheap. We can shop 24-7. Um, so we bring it in by the truckloads into our houses, and we don't think about taking out that much that we bring in. So it starts to pile up, and we don't, and, and uh, so many of my clients say, I don't know how I got this way. I don't know where this all came from. I say, probably through the front door, but you just don't notice because it's so subtle and so stealthy that you really don't notice that it's just piling up around you. So uh, Phyllis Diller said, that cleaning your house before your kids stop growing is like shoveling your walk before it stops sewing. And I know a lot of my clients will call after everyone's moved out and say, well, you still have bedrooms full of stuff. And we want to use that bedroom for A, B, C. So we need to help cleaning that out. But um, first of all, they can't get their kids to take their stuff. And a lot of times they live in an apartment. My son lived in a 200 square foot apartment in Manhattan. He wasn't going to be taking his stuff anywhere anytime soon. Um, and then he lived in Brooklyn, and I wasn't that too much any, any bigger. Um, so they've got to do something with it, maybe. Um, get permission from the children, maybe, to let go, get rid of it. Um, so with the having phones now that you can take a picture of and say, do you want this? Because uh, we used to make a list, have them call their, their kids and say, okay, this is the stuff that I want to know if you want. Um, it was just this long, drawn out process. Um, one of my clients decided to just box it all up and send it to her kids. One was in <laughs> Washington, one was in Texas. She said, I'm done. Every time they come home for Thanksgiving, I beg them to go through their stuff. I said, I'll just do that, you know. But I need you to do that. No, I don't. So she, she said, I'd rather get a postage than put up with this anymore. So uh, my other, one of my, I, my book, I put it in the chapters of eight chapters, but they all have a cartoon and they all have um, some quotes from people. And this is one from Ellen DeGeneres, and she says, there's a name for people who have the most stuff. They're called hoarders. But back in the day, they were just called grandmothers. <laughs> my sister hates that because she's a grandmother. But um, really, my sister or, and my mother, whenever you needed something, you'd say, go ask your mother, probably. We'd go to her basement, we shop in her basement, because she had so much stuff. And my sister has so much stuff. I wasn't the keeper of stuff, I never was. Um, probably because we didn't have a lot of money, but also because we had a smaller house. So we didn't have a place to put up all that stuff. So I feel that that was the best thing we ever did was buy a small-ish house. And my husband would constantly say, you know we need a bigger house. I said, what for? To put more stuff in? No, we don't need a bigger house. We have one child. This is all we need. So, uh, so crap is uh, an acronym that I made up a long time ago. It's clutter that's robbing you of pleasure. And it's, it's making you feel that, um, that you don't like your home anymore. Uh, stuff that doesn't bring joy, pleasure, or usefulness, or life to your home. It's also owner specific because one person's crap could be another person's treasure. We all know that from yard sales. I'm a big yard sale person. But um, unless it's on my list or it's something I need, or I can sell it on eBay, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to get it. Um, number three, it's retail or market value is irrelevant. Just because it's expensive, just because it was expensive, doesn't mean it can't be crap. And it also prevents homeowners from enjoying their home or living their best life. And that's probably the, the thing that has my clients calling me. I'm just, I'm done. It's too much. I need help. I can't make decisions quickly. Um, it takes me forever. And once I rip a place apart, it stays that way and I walk away. So um, that's probably the biggest reason. Uh, so when it comes to stuff, um, I've always been, I, I call it a thrower. I don't mean throwing out. 
but I can let go of saying you weren't even looking at my husband. The direct opposite. <laughs> Depends. Oh, that's very common. Okay, and how many of you are like my husband, death grip on your stuff? Yeah, yeah. And he blames it on the fact that he's an only child, which isn't a good reason, because my son's an only child and he's a minimalist. So uh, it's how you're brought up, but it's also how um, how you feel about your things. My husband is very attached to stuff that has to do with his family because he's only child, and he feels like, oh, that's from my grandmother's farm. That's that's. Um, uh, I have to keep that. Um, or somebody said to him, "Don't ever throw this out." Is anybody getting that one? <laughs> Don't ever. Throw out. I was. We were cleaning out a house this past fall, and we have notes inside things that say, "Don't ever throw this out." <laughs> well, you're not here now. And what are we going to do with it? And nobody wants it. Yeah, we're, and, and throwing out is one thing. But donating is a whole other thing. You know, everybody says, I don't want to throw this out. I don't need it, but I don't want to throw it out. Well, we're not going to throw it out. We're going to donate it. We're going to sell it. We're going to do something. We're going to recycle it. Whatever. Okay, there's lots more choices than putting it in a landfill, which is my very last vision. When it comes to the opposite of you, how many people live with the opposite of you? You're both either throwers or you're both either saved, you know, you're both opposite. That's really where things get dicey. Because those are my husband's and my biggest, uh, I guess you could call them disagreements, um, is him, I'm wanting him to let go of something and he's just hanging on with the death grip. When I know we're trying to make room for the future rather than the past. Um, so it, it's really hard when one person really wants to do it and the other person is totally against it. Um, then, then you really get into some, some arguments. I work with very few husband and wife teams. Like Bob and his wife, very unusual because it's not very often that you're on the same page. It's so unusual. I call them unicorn families. They just don't really exist uh, in a lot of in a lot of cases. So if you're both on the same page, you're both agreeing on where things should go and how often you should get rid of things, it's it's a pleasure, but it's not very common. So don't feel like you're a different, you know, unusual. Um, one of the things that I ran into a lot with my clients when I started is they have these myths of why they can't let go of something. Um, and this is why I can't get rid of it, and this is, this is a, I mean, they number in the, the tens and twenties about why they can't let go of something. So I started writing them down, and I started uh, making lists of, of these. So this is what I came up with my top ten reasons why people don't want to get rid of their crap. And I did it uh, all out David Letterman because he just starts everything from number 10. So number 10, I might need it someday. Haven't we all said that? I might need it someday. But the clients that I work with are our age. And if you haven't used it by now, can't you trust your judgment and say, I'm probably not going to use it if I haven't already. You know, and if you have used it before, am I not going to use it? Yeah, trust your judgment. You know, you can, you can, you know whether you're going to use it or not. Um, I give folks, I say, if you haven't used it in two years, now that's just a guideline. <coughs> but if you got a really nice snowblower and it didn't snow last year, you're not going to get rid of your snowblower. I get that, but um, it's kind of a guideline. Uh, clothing, especially. That's a really tough one for a lot of folks, is to get rid of their clothing, even if they didn't wear it last year or the year before. Um, you know, uh, America has more clothing. We give away so much more clothing than any other country. Um, and 
we only wear about 20% of what we have in our closets. So uh, there's so much that we can let go of. But it's all the fast fashion has really got us buying and buying and buying to the point of excess. Um, just because my closet's this big doesn't mean I can't have this much. Um, where before, we kept to the size that we had. That was my limit. Well, no, now that it's filling out, I just need a bigger house or I need more more dressers or I need, you know. Um, sometimes nice to have limits uh, to say, well, if I keep it to this, then maybe that will be manageable. But you don't think about when you're buying your stuff. Uh, this number nine, it cost me a lot of money. Um, or it's worth a lot of money. So uh, this doesn't mean that you can't let it go. And keeping it around just is just reminding you of the fact that it's worth a lot of money and you're not using it. I had a client who had a huge, beautiful, great front wood uh, china closet. People don't use a lot of those anymore. And it was beautiful. She said, it was my mother-in-law's, you know, so I feel like I can't get rid of it. And I said, well, does your husband want to keep it? Because it was his mother's. She said, no, he said, it's fine if I get rid of it. So, well, if we can't repurpose it for something else, why don't we just sell it? And she said, I think we could do that. I said, yeah, it's yours. We could do that. We could sell this. She said, but that would break up the set. Oh, God, if I hear that one more time. <laughs> it's okay to break up the set. They're not going to know that they're, you know, that they're been broken up, you know. Um, Hardly any of my stuff in my home matches because I like antiques, so everything's mixed match. Um, but no, you don't, and, and it's say if you want two of the chairs, keep two of the chairs, and break up the set of chairs, do that too. It's okay. It's your stuff. So yes, she got rid of that. She sold that, and she bought a desk because she was transferring that dining room into an office for a business she was starting. So that made so much more sense to her. And that break front was not user friendly for a business. Uh, number eight. This is a good, good one. A friend gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> my mom gave it to me. My sister gave it to me. Um, but my first question is, well, do you like it? And I was like, it wasn't my taste. I never liked it when she gave it to me. And then we let it go. But it's a gift. I feel bad. Okay. No. If it's given to you, it is yours to have to do with what you want. You may re-gift it. You may sell it. You may donate it. You can do whatever you want with it. And it's okay. So um, just because your kids gave it to you, honestly, ask them. Is it okay if I give her a Of course, Mom. I don't, you don't need to keep that. You know. How many of our kids are saying, don't you dare sell that or get rid of that? They're not like it was way back when they said, don't get rid of this. And I think that they were saying, don't get rid of this only because they thought it was uh, something that was worth keeping. It was an heirloom, whatever. I want you to use it in your home. Um, that's why they want us to keep it. But that doesn't, doesn't go anymore. Um, number seven. I had a client say this to me, and she said, my aunt gave it to me, and I want to display it when she comes to visit. <laughs> yeah. And I said, it was a painting. It wasn't that big. It was about this big. And I said, well, do you like the painting? She said, oh, no, it's just not my taste. I said, so, I said, how old is your aunt? She's in her 70s. And I said, well, how, long, how often does she come to visit? Once every seven, eight years. <laughs> and I said, that's a lot of thinking to do to get find it and get it out and put it up when she comes to visit. And she said, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. And I said, so you think you could let it go? She said, yeah, I think I can let it go. Um, I, I was walking through my best friend's house once, and I said, that is so neat. And I said, something on her wall, and she said, you gave that to me. <laughs> I didn't remember that. I don't remember when I give people things. Um, it's a gift and it goes out of my head. But um, your aunt's not going to care. But even if she did care, it's yours. She gave it to you. It's yours to do with what you want. 
number six, this whatever it has been in my family for years. You know, I have a lot of clients who hear that and they feel guilt. This has been in my family for years. So if I'm the one that lets it go, then I've broken this chain and now I'm to blame that we don't have this thing in our family. Really? Are you using it? Or is it in your attic or in your basement, stuffed away and no one sees it? That's not honoring your family. Okay, if you're gonna use it, then use it. Pull it out of storage and use it. If you're not gonna use it, ask somebody else in the family, do you want this? It's not my, uh, not a storage facility. If you guys want this, then somebody needs to take it. Otherwise, I'm letting it go. You're giving it to someone else who can start a history with this thing that we think we have to keep in our family. Uh, number five, this is a big one. I'm gonna pass it down to my kids. <laughs> yeah. How many of you have kids that want your stuff? No. no. Some things. Some things. I, and I think I know what my son might want and what he wouldn't want. Um, but to assume that your children want your stuff is what we did. It's what my mom did. Um, he kept the china, he kept the nice things, and he said, I'm going to hand them down to my kids when they have their own apartment, when they have their own place. Um, this is what I'm going to give them. And then you find out that your son's daughter in law, it's not her taste, she's not going to have that in her house. Um, I remember one of my clients saying, this is the china that I saved for my son when he got married. And I said, well, he's married, right? Yeah, he's married. Did you show this to the daughter-in-law? She said, yes. And I said, well, what did she say? She said she didn't want it. I said, well, okay. So can we sell it? And she said, no, I think she's going to want it. <laughs> I said, you're going to keep that after she said that she didn't want it and you're not going to take her opinion, and you're gonna tell her that, that's not a good way to start a, a, you know, a relationship with your daughter-in-law. I said, she's not gonna change her mind. She's already in her 40s, her 30s, whatever. She knows herself. She's not gonna just all of a sudden want your stuff. So I said, I would think about that. So I never tell anybody to get rid of something, ever, because it's not my stuff. Um, and I think a month after she had that conversation with me, I came back to her house and she said, you know what, I, I need, I'm going to sell the check. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Uh, yeah, so no means no, by the way. If your kids say, no, we don't want that, they actually mean no, okay? Uh, number four, this thing will be worth a lot of money someday. Somebody told me that it would be, or I knew it would be. Somebody offered me hundreds of dollars for this once, and I figured by now it's got to really be worth something. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't very often happen. Unless we're talking about sterling, or you're talking about gold or platinum, yeah, that's worth more. But um, there aren't a lot of things that were worth a lot of money years and years ago as an antique that would be worth more now. Um, there are some things. There's definitely exceptions. Um, my sister and I have been selling on eBay for 15 of my 17 years of doing uh, professional organizing. And the things that used to sell 15 years ago don't sell now. And the things that we do sell sometimes, we think, I can't believe somebody paid that for that. It's not always the amount that they pay. But that somebody actually wanted it. You know, we, we put it on there so that it gets out to the people who want it because they're going to pay shipping and they are going to pay to have it. And they actually want it. So that's more of the reason we have eBay than, than anything because it's a lot of work. But um, find out if you think it's worth a lot of money, then talk to an auctioneer or go on eBay and find out if it sold for a lot of money not are they selling it for a lot of money because there's plenty of stuff out there on ebay that they're selling for a lot of money but it doesn't necessarily sell so you have to look at completed listings when you go on ebay you have to click that box completed listings then you can see what it actually sold okay now that'll tell you um and 
think years and years and years ago before the internet, yes, we thought it was worth a lot of money because we thought we were the ones that all we had. We only had one of uh, a few. Well, then the internet came around and we realized, oh my God, there's 500,000 of these. I didn't know it. Uh, this was mass produced and I had no idea, even though it was really cool. So that pretty much told people, no, your stuff's not one of a kind, it's one of a million. Uh, number three, I, I got this one from a client. She said, I'm saving this for my grandchildren. Now, her children were only this high. <laughs> and she said she's saving it for her grandchildren. I said, oh, okay, let's think about this. We're going to put it in a box and label it for my grandchildren. And we're going to put it somewhere in this house so you can remember someday when your kids maybe have children. You need to know if your kids want to have children. Um, it's just a, a lot to, to keep track of till you have these imaginary grandchildren. And I'll tell you, since I was a, a financial aid director, what your grandchildren need from you is money for college <laughs> and your time. They want to spend time with you. They want to go on vacation with you, right Bob? Mm -hmm. That's what they want. They want to spend time with you. Or they want money for college or uh, to go to a trade school or to go to the first apartment. That's what they need. Not more stuff. Number two, my children will get rid of all this stuff when I'm gone. And that's okay. If your kids have said, don't bother, we will, we will, you know, all come, we're gonna all have a one of them said we're gonna have a bonfire. <laughs> my client was like, oh my god, they're gonna burn every all my stuff. If if that's if they're okay with that, and they said, don't bother cleaning out, we'll take care of it then that's fine, if you're okay with how they're gonna do it. I, um, I have to say, to clean out a house, and to, to <coughs> donate and recycle and, and do what's um, ecologically necessary, it costs a lot of money to do that. And not everybody has that kind of money to do it, I guess, I don't wanna say right, but do it the way that the earth would want you to do it. Not a lot of people have that kind of time or that kind of money. So if you're planning on leaving the whole household, make sure you leave a lot of money for them to do it um, maybe the way you would like it to be done. Sell it or donate it or recycle it. Uh, only put trash with trash, okay? And the number one reason why people don't get rid of, rid of their as we go through, as we, you know, I, I go through little piece by piece by piece with my clients. Uh, ask them what it is, why it's here, how long have they had it. The number one reason they say they can't get rid of it is because it's so cute. Everything is cute. It's all cute, you know. Um, and I said, one day I said to my client, let's count how many times you say cute. And we did. We counted. It was like 35 times everything was cute. It's all cute. That's why you buy it. That's why you bought it. That's why they sold it to you. That's why it's for sale. It's cute. But is it useful? Are you using it? Is it something that you're going to miss if you get rid of it? Um, so that is, if you keep saying to yourself, I know I can't fit into this dress, but isn't it cute? <laughs> no, it's not cute, especially if you can't wear it. Cuter on somebody who would actually fit. Okay. So when I do talk to my clients about letting their stuff go, and um, the hardest part of that, I would, I would say the hardest part probably is making the decision. Um, the reason they don't get to it is it's delaying decisions because it takes so much time. And you have to take the time to decide, ask discerning all these questions. Why do I have this? How long have I had it? Am I going to use it? For every single thing in your house. But once you've done that and you have this accumulation of stuff you want to let go of, what do you do with it? Okay, where does it go? All right. I have on my website, now there's one handout up here, the green one. 
how to recycle your crap and how you know, where you can take your stuff. But it's a very general handout. It's very generally what you can do with your stuff. But on my website, there's one how to recycle your or donate crap in Berks County. And that one I list in many places. It's three pages, and it's um, every place I've ever donated or recycled something in Berks County. It takes work, but you know what? It's a it's a, res a responsible thing to do. It makes me feel happy when I do it. It makes me feel like I'm doing something for the earth when I when I donate and when I recycle. Um, as soon as, if you read that list, if you see it, and there's something on there that you know, um, that you go to a place that you recycle or you donate, and it's not on there, please let me know. I want to add it, because I like to keep it as up to date as possible. And give people as many choices as possible to let go of their stuff. Because, um, and I think, um, you know, our churches uh, often do drives different times of the year, or, like different uh, places will have, um, like all the uh, nonprofits have wish lists on their websites between Safe Burks and Mary Shelter, and all of these places have wish lists of the things that they do want. Try not to give them things that they don't have on their list. Um, I was, uh, I helped with a walk for the breast cancer support services in Burks County. And we helped, my sister and I helped them clean out the donation room. And some of the stuff, I would pick it up and say, so why did you get this? She said, I think they just didn't know anybody else to take it to, so they brought it to us and they thought we could use it. It was nothing that they would even uh, remotely, even in a raffle. It just didn't make any sense. So don't take your junk and dump it on a nonprofit and they'll be so happy for Especially if they're going to have to get rid of it because they can't use it. Okay. But um, go to their website. They usually have a wish list that says, this is the stuff you need, this is the stuff you want. Okay? And you can use those lists to let go of your stuff. Um, I also uh, have a website that has lots of handouts, just about practically anything you want to uh, organize. Um, organizing is only the thing you do after you've let go of your crap. So don't organize your crap and with your with everything else. You gotta let go of the crap first and then organize. Okay? Um, and that's my website is full of those kinds of handouts. Um, also, uh, I have my book. I have a few books for sale. Um, Ten dollars a piece. Uh, if you have a clutter challenge friend who you think you want to give a book to, I can sign up for them also. But um, it's also on Nook and also on, uh, which is the clutter-free version. You can get it on Nook or Kindle. So uh, I put out a semi-monthly newsletter. I say semi-monthly because I don't always get around to it. But uh, I promise I won't clog up your, your inbox. But it's usually a, a pretty um, newsy uh, newsletter tips, uh, different ways to recycle. I just sent the one out for the recycling that's going to be in April, the semi-annual hazardous waste and shredding. So if you don't know those dates, I have those. I can tell you what they are. But you have to register online for those. They ask, ask you to register now so that they know how many people are going to show up. Hmm. Um, and if you want to get that newsletter, there's a sign-up sheet here. You can give me your email address. So, um, if you, um, I mean, my book is more for, um, it makes a great bathroom reader. <laughs> it's pretty short, short little snippets. Um, my, one of my favorite comics is my husband. He's, he's here on page 23. And this says, um, coaching four sports gave Bob hours of joy and hundreds of t-shirts from will never wear again. <laughs> and they're all up in our attic in boxes. And um, that's how I had to let it go because he just, he couldn't part with them. Um, most, they mostly have his name on them. And he said, how am I gonna give this to the 
the goodwill, and I said, you're not the only bob in the world, honey, and I don't know it's you, so, but he still wasn't letting go. I said, well, why don't you let me make them into those t-shirt quilts? You know, I made my son two of them. I'm a good sewer. I love to sew. So why don't you let me do that? He goes, are you going to have to cut the t-shirts? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole idea. You cut them and you put them in a quilt. He goes, oh, no. So, um, but God bless him, I think he, he did start to go through them um, because we're trying to make room for business for my, my son and my daughter-in-law. Uh, and we need room, so he needs to start looking for the t-shirts. So, um, let me give you a closing quote from Nate Burkus. He's that cute guy on uh, some of the HGTV uh, shows. He says, everything I have in my home is a personal reference that makes me think of somewhere I've been or reminds me of a person I've loved. And that's what I aspire to in my whole house. If it's not out and I'm not honoring it and I'm not looking at it and just smiling and thinking of a place I've been or a person I've loved, then it's probably time to move on. It's probably crap. It might be something I'm ready to let go of. But uh, aspiring to, to live by that quote, this is also my quote, whoever has the most stuff leaves a mess for their relatives. <laughs> so, all right. I really welcome your questions. If there's anything that's been on your mind about something you have, you don't know what to do with it, where can I donate this, or that kind of thing. Stacy, yes? Um, there you go. I, I have a pretty big voice. Can you hear me? No, you can't. <laughs> All right. Um, true confessions. My son came to lunch today, and I cleared off the kitchen by putting it in a box. I have lots of boxes. And my big clutter problem, I've got others, but the big one is paper. Paper. Yeah. And it can be important paper, it can be something else, not. So do you have any suggestions beyond put on my big girl pants? <laughs> yes, I do. And that's so common. Um, on a handout I have how to keep clutter from, uh, keep clutter at bay in your home. Number one mail is clutter, paper clutter, mail. Um, have a place where it comes in the door one place to sort it. And the first sort is so important. And you have your junk mail, and you have your shredding, and you have trash. And then you have the space that says, I need to, I need to look at this. I need to do something with this. I need to answer this um, invitation. Uh, I need to pay this bill. Okay, Those go in one pile in one place. As long as it's not everywhere, okay? One pile, one place to pay bills, wherever you do pay your bills, it doesn't matter where you pay them, but take them to that place and have a, have a place to put them in. Not just a flat surface, but a, a box or a, a pretty container or something to put it in so that it's there. It's not maybe everywhere, it's probably there, okay? So, that first sort is so important. Trash, and, and be tough. Now, 90% of what you get in your mail, you never asked for in the first place. So it shouldn't all of a sudden be something that's gonna change your life. <laughs> it's not, okay? Don't, you know, I was an advertising major in college. That really is helpful now, too, because I know all the tricks. Why are they trying to sell you this? It's either out of fear or guilt or some other thing that they're trying to sell you something. If you didn't ask for it, throw it out. Okay, it's junk. Now, if it's a credit card offer, you wanna rip that twice, or put it in the shred bin um, that you don't wanna to let someone else have. Um, so the big sort is right up front. And, and try to make it feel like something, I can't wait to throw this. Yeah, when it comes to the door. I just can't wait. You're not gonna get it this time. Boom, you're out of here. 
And I've got the boxes right there. Open the cabinets, put them all in. I'm done. And I get the bills. I take them upstairs. But also, uh, I have them on paper list with all your bills. Try and do that. Um, that's a big one. And you don't get any of that in the mail. Um, you get so little mail. My, my poor husband. I love this day. I mean, don't get any mail. He's so disappointed. <laughs> I said, hon, you know how many times I've been going on these lists and said, don't send us any of this crap? And I'm all paperless. I'm sorry, sweetheart. It's not going to get a lot of mail. So, you know, be tough. Um, yeah, put your big girl plan if you want to do it. But you know what? It's not easy. And there's a lot of things that you might want to read. Here's a magazine I think I might want to read, or I really do want to read more about this. Put it in the same pile as the pay bills pile, okay? And then that's the, the bin you go through. When you pay your bills, also look at that stuff. Do I really need to read this? If it's going to take less than 60 seconds to read it, read it. Less than 60 seconds, you'll be able to tell. Trust your judgment. You'll be able to tell whether you need it's not rocket science. Anything that's coming through your door is not rocket science. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Donald. You know, I don't really have a question, but I just um, sold my house a year and a half ago. Okay. Big house, <coughs> gardening, garage, uh, lots of stuff. And I knew given the real estate market, the house would sell fast. And I had to unload fast, and I was moving into much smaller circumstances. I heard a phrase in the last couple of years called the Swedish death cleanse. In Sweden, the elderly clear out their stuff before they go. It's very thoughtful. So I did a Swedish death cleanse. Uh, it's what I did. So I moved from a house to a one-bedroom apartment. A lot of stuff, and here's what I learned in the process. Uh, if you bring something into your home, take something out of your home. Uh, buy less stuff. You mentioned sustainable clothing. America has a problem with stuff and clothing in particular, and there's a movement to go into sustainable clothing. You will find such things. In getting rid of stuff, Nobody wants your stuff anyway, and no one wants to buy it. This is Birch County. Put it outside and put a sign free. <laughs> <laughs> they will take it. They will take it. Facebook has a marketplace. Yep. Put stuff on there uh, as well. And there was some stuff that I knew I didn't want to go to clutter a one bedroom apartment. So I took a storage unit for three months for the stuff that I just wasn't quite sure, right. but didn't want to clutter up the new place. Right. And I don't like paying for storage units. There you go. So I got a three month or two month deal, and in that three months, I either moved it in or just got rid of it. Yeah. And it gets, the, you know, I, I thought this was gonna be, it got really easier and I'm ready to go even smaller and have less <laughs> as well. Yeah. Thank you, you did a great job. That's awesome, <laughs> you get an A plus um, plus. That's really good uh, advice because if, if you've done it, you know what it's like and you know the good feeling you can get. I have to say my clients, after we start, they get the bug and they get the hang of it. You know. Uh, I, a lot of people want to say that they're hoarders. I don't work with hoarders because I'm not psychologically trained to do that. So I can't help them and I can't make them get rid of anything because they don't want to. So I have people I can send them to. But if nobody's, nobody's gonna call me if they're a hoarder because I am going to want you to let go. And if that's not what your goal is, then that's not, then I'm not the person. And I had people come in. I lived in a village up in Northern Berks. I, you know, I'm just invited to the village in. You want anything? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I gifted a lot of things yeah. to people and asked people, hey, come over. If there's something you'd like, take it. That's awesome. Boy, you, you, have, you could just give so many people hope to say that it can be done. So I appreciate your, your comments. I really do. Thank you. 
Uh, well, in a way, you uh, answered uh, part of my question. I want to get it more into the psychology of hoarding. Uh, every once in a while, I get to read my paper where um, a person is missing and uh, eventually they go into their home and uh, they can't move around because it's just piled with all kinds of debris. And in the uh, debris and all the stuff, they find the body of the person who's missing mm -hmm. uh, because it fell on them. Yeah. And uh, I, I was wondering more about your organization. Uh, you just said you don't get into the psychology of, uh, of hoarding too much. I don't get into the psychology of hoarding, but I do get into the psychology of keeping stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's hoarding and the why people hang on to stuff, two different things. Because the, the, psychology, the hoarding person is keeping their stuff because of some thing that happened in their life or some kind of tragedy or the way they were brought up. It's, that's why they're hoarding. And they need psychological help and they need the, the um, uh, person to come into their home to actually help them physically let go of stuff if they can. And third, they could go on medication there is a diagnosis number for that now. There, never, there didn't used to be like 10 years ago, but now there is. So that is a whole different psychology than the psychology. I, I um, have a master's in education. Part of that was psychology. And it's fascinating that I am so thankful that I have those classes. And I'm thankful that I was in um, counseling myself to know what are the issues around counseling and what do I say to folks as they're trying to go through stuff that they want to hang on to. The psychology of hanging on to stuff is not like the psychology of being a hoarder. But so much, everybody says, well, you must do a lot of counseling. Yeah, I think I do, but you really have to listen to folks. Um, what's the reason behind it? Why are they holding on to it? Um, very often it's just, I just want to find a better home for it. I just don't want to throw it out. I know it's useful to someone else, but I just don't know where to take it, and I want someone to use my stuff. That's very often the reason they don't want to let it I'd like to know a little more about your organization. Uh, how many people do you employ? Uh, 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 what, uh, what do you do? Are you act more in an advisory capacity? Uh, do you actually physically uh, help people? Yeah. Uh, how much do you charge? What, yeah. what, what's the process? I work one-on-one -on -one with the client. It's just me. Oh. Um, for the 17 years I've been in business, I've worked with, I've had a subcontract person come in with me if there's a lot of stuff and they need to help me take it away. Um, if I'm cleaning out a house and we're doing it um, without the, the family because they've already taken what they want and we do just cleaning it out. Um, so, uh, and then the other, I employ my sister. I employ my sister to do the eBay part of it. And then I employ my niece to do all the um, uh, packaging of the eBay. So that's who I, those are the only, we are the crew, the three of us. When I started 17 years ago and I called it the crew, I thought maybe I would hire different people. I would have a crew, I would have all the, and then I realized, do I really want to be responsible for other people's livelihoods? Do I really want to be a manager like I was at Alberta and be in charge of people? The answer was no. And the other thing is, to be an organizer, to be a professional organizer, to go in, I've had thousands of hours of training, uh, either through professional development or just doing this. And you can't just do it. Um, I remember thinking that my brother might want to go into business with me. And, um, he went on an assessment with me. That's the first thing you do when you walk into a client's home and you do an assessment. He said to me, when we walked out, he goes, full of stuff. Why doesn't she just get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> no, no, no. Honey, if she could just get rid of it, she wouldn't need it. She can't just get rid of it. There's a psychology behind it. There's a, there's, there's a lot more going on here than you from the outside. So he was seen, he saw stuff. He didn't see her. So um, it's not an easy thing and training someone else to be on my crew, I just didn't feel like um, like I could give them that much responsibility, I guess. 
Um, there's a lot of other professional organizers out there being trained by the National Association of Productivity Professionals, and I love that. And I, I recommend them to tons of people all over the country because they'll call me either because they'll be over for a speaking thing. Do you, any, do you come, do you travel? No, I don't travel, but I know somebody in your area. Um, you need to be trained, you need to be sympathetic, non-judgmental, and know, go where you, your people are. But before I walk in, I say to whoever's out there listening, help me help them. That's all I say. Because they are in a totally different place than the last person I've met with. So help me help them. Try to stay focused on what they want, not what I want. And you're Ray? Okay. Um, his mother just passed away. My parents passed away a while ago. We've got all of their stuff. All, well, not all of it, but pretty much all of it. But a lot of it is handcrafted things, like his grandmother and my grandmother, they crocheted, they did it, they weaved it needlepoint. Yeah. I've got loads of that stuff. Plus, cut glass. My, his mother loved cut glass. It was beautiful then. Nobody wants it. I, I can't, I, you know, you go to the well, they turned me away and said, we don't want this. Same thing with all of these beautiful napkins that are all beautifully embroidered. Nobody wants them. It's really hard to sell linens. Well, yeah. they're, 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 some of them are really, they're in good shape, but some of them are not. But the needlepoint is very nice. So I, I said to uh, Goodwill, now I've got a place in Lancaster. I'm going to try and take them to some. And where is that? Um, it's on near Dutch Wonderland. I forget what the name of it is. But they take like knickknacky stuff, like his mom Crap. sewed, and mm -hmm. she had lots of like rick rack and stuff like that. Yeah, art of recycle in in um, Ephrata takes that too. Art of recycle, they'll take um, craft supplies, and a lot of teachers shop there. Um, if if you're not sure what to do with it, and you think somebody else will turn it into something else, and it's not trash, art okay. of recycle. Yeah, and then I have like a boom sweet. I have tried recycling. Oh, I know where that is. On Hilltop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you know what? No, they don't take speakers. <laughs> you know what? They don't take speakers anymore. They're, they said just throw them out. It's not yeah, It's not something that they can take apart to get copper wires or anything. They're just a box. So those you throw. Yeah. I know. It's sometimes, what I do tell my clients is sometimes trash is trash. Yeah, but can you recycle them or can you just no. throw them in the trash? Throw them in the trash. Oh, yeah. speakers? Oh, I did that. Speakers. Two very specific questions. Yes. I was in the service for quite a while. I've got a bunch of manuals, but these suckers are like three quarters of an inch thick, mm -hmm. and they have real heavy staples in them. Yeah. What do I do with those? Um, you can recycle those. The staples are, you can recycle them or you can take them to the shredder. Staples at all? Staples, absolutely. The, okay. yeah. the other question is, we got stuck with uh, deceased relatives. Trophies. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got boxes of trophies. What do you do with them? You know what, I used to give those to like Olivet and all those places and they would take the, the um, plaque off and they put another plaque on and that was years ago. And then when I started bringing them, they were like, can't take any more. We have way too many. You throw it out. And if they're metal, they if can be recycled. If it's not metal, right? yeah, right. If it's metal, some of them are composite. There are resin or whatever. But if they're metal, take it to the metal recycling. Get a get a penny for it. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hi. My wife and I are very active in the Hamburger Area Historical Society, and we welcome uh, items that have historic value. And many people. Um, don't realize the value of what they have. So we do accept items that have that yeah. relevance and do, do have a place for storing them. Certainly we're not going to be a workhouse, but there are items that do have yeah. important historical meaning yes. to the community as well as the individual. That's a really so good at, at a personal, historic, local level, yes. I would recommend that to anyone that has an item that has that kind of implication to consult the local historical group. Yeah, do some do some Googling, see if there's a historical society. I know the Berks Historical Society, Berks County, they've taken some items from my clients. Yeah. They'll say to me, do you think anybody would want this? 
And I, sometimes I can say, you know what? That's very interesting. That's very old. That is like, I think that's one of a kind. Yeah, we, we, we were actually trying to, to actually, um, yeah, a new building in, constructed in nice. Hanover to enable us to house a lot of the oh, material. Great. So <clears throat> it's a big effort that's ongoing that's right now that. in that area. Um, now, aside from that, looking at this from a personal level, what I found meaningful for me, and my wife and I have moved many times <clears throat> over the past 30, 40 years, and every move is traumatic, and we end up dumping all the stuff. <laughs> and you still end up having more than we realize when we end up in the new house. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now, and I've been doing for some time, those items that are especially meaningful, however that is defined, I'm photographing them and recording them. So if you look at it in 3D, why not look at it in a CD yeah. or a flash drive? Yeah. And you keep that, and as long as you have it documented, you know where it came from. We have a lot of photos with no names in the back that are meaningless to us. So we are trying to document a lot of that as well, not just items, but old photographs. So people that come after us know what's there. So it's like easy for them to up. get this material and, and you know, pull it up. And, uh, and it up. Files. Yeah, taking the picture. Um, I have a lot of clients who have children who they can't give away their, uh, let go of their precious artwork. Um, so <laughs> if, if that's something that you want to keep, take a picture of it, scan it, whatever. Um, I have a scanner on my phone, so I'll help them scan the things and then they can put it on there. I said, now, don't be let your computer become the clutter bug of your pictures. <laughs> Try and put them into folders or tag them at least um, with something so you know what they are. But the, the phone and the, the scanner on your phone has been valuable yeah. to either save it or to say, do you want this? And send them a picture. You know, if you're saying I'm going to save this for so-and-so, ask them now. I go, why don't you ask them now? And they're like, oh yeah, I can ask them now. So send them a picture. Uh, that kind of thing. But I'm glad you said about the scanning thing. That's one question I have. I have two questions for this crowd in case you have answers for me. I have clients who want to scan photos um, and get a ton of them scanned at once and don't want to send them away to Legacy Box or somewhere far away. They want to do it locally. Even if it's, you know, uh, within, uh, you know, all Berks County or beyond. Anybody have a place? There's an outfit called Evergreen I've been talking to, and they have a, a facility in, is it Montgomeryville? Okay. It's in Montgomery County. Okay. So it's, you know, what, a 50 minute drive, and you don't okay. have to trust the mail. Okay, all right. Um, could you email it to me? I'll, 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 I'll yeah, my email, email is on, on that. If you can email that person. I'll look it up and send it. Yeah, I, I know um, people don't want to send their stuff away. Um, they just don't trust the mail, or they don't, I can't let go of my pictures to someone that I don't know. So if we can find a local place to scan and give you on a flash drive or, you know, uh, a CD. Um, my other question was, oh, there used to be a gentleman in Hamburg that would va value stamps, stamp collections, and he has passed away. And now I have no one to give my name to give my clients to because they have stamp collections or they have stamps that they don't know what to do with. So if anybody knows anybody, uh, even if it's not local. There's a listing in the merchandiser for a guy that does coins and stamps. I don't know what his name is, but okay. it's, it's in the merchandiser. In the merchandiser. It, there's one yeah. merchandiser and there's one in the newspaper because I have old jewelry I want to get rid of. Custom jewelry. Okay. Or costume jewelry. Not custom. <laughs> costume. Okay. And he right. does it by weight, but he also has a thing about stamps and coins. Okay. My um, recommendation for precious metal is um, is Hamburg uh, to Holders. Yeah. yeah, just tell them that I sent you, and they'll know that I sent you because they know they give they'll give you the best price they can because they they turn it over very quickly and very fast, so they'll give you the best price they can. Yes. And if they don't want it, they throw it in the box <laughs> behind the counter, but they we. They gave us fair price. Yeah. Just the day before COVID shut down, we were about ready to go to a continuous care facility. Okay. We had not signed papers, et cetera, and we decided this, this isn't going to happen. So during COVID, uh, we really worked on a 
our house. Two reasons, you know, basically so we could fit when we go <laughs> and not knowing when that was. And we used, um, and they weren't having auctions at that time. There, we, were, we worked with a juggler from Pine Grove who has on and on. Yeah. Um, and, and we felt very pleased with yeah. him and comfortable. Yeah, I and worked with Rob. He's, he's excellent. He took a, a lot, well, Dick Henry. Dick he worked with Dick Henry. Also, he checked with him and said, what do you know about this guy? <laughs> but um, at any rate, he took a lot of our antiques that we were ready to let go of. We knew they would not fit. Yeah. And children didn't have it, etc. And a comment that he made to us after he was just coming in to take it. I mean, he took a car. Um, he said, you know, in about 10 years, there will not be an antique market because they do, the kids do not want them. So keep that in mind. If you have antiques you want to get rid of, now, now may not be the time. Yeah. And those that we kept, we will keep them to wear right. wherever we go. Yeah, if you have a lot to get rid of at a time, an antique dealer is the way to go, an auctioneer, um, because they will take away bank stuff, uh, they will take away furniture, you know, antiques, whatever. Um, don't think you're going to get a lot of money for your stuff just because you either paid for it or it's old. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's worth a lot. Um, but it's the way to let go of a lot of stuff at once. And it was gone. It was gone. <laughs> it, it was gone. And I said to him, what if you can't sell it? And he said, we'll get rid of it. We'll donate it. Great. And you can watch your auction online because we watch. Yeah. I mean, we, we yeah. watch bids come in on our thing. Not a lot of people like doing that because they're like, ooh, you know, oh, we went for a dollar? Oh, yeah, they don't like that. Yeah. You were, you were very great. They also told us that the holes that we have gathered safely <laughs> over the years we should use for target practice. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't care. Yeah. Right. They don't owe you anything. No, you're enjoying that. Last question. So, <clears throat> now, I just want to mention the day the real estate market shut down because of COVID was the day our house went on the market. <laughs> I remember that. We worked so hard to get it ready. And then COVID yeah. came. Anyway, <clears throat> we're still able to sell it. Anyway, um, <laughs> I remember you saying to us a couple of times, maybe more than once, does this bring you joy? <laughs> and actually, I used that word before Marie Kondo, just more like in the background. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I always found that helpful. Um, the other, Harry had asked a question earlier, part of his question uh, was your rate. Could you address that? Um, yeah, my, I, my rate is 75 an hour. Um, if you, uh, if uh, you want senior citizens or whatever, I might give a discount because of, um, the fact that we're probably not going to move this fast, or um, we don't have, um, you know, it depends. It really does depend. Um, but that is my rate, 75 an hour. Thank you. And you don't accept barter. Pardon me? You don't accept barter. Uh, barter. I, no, I don't accept barter. <laughs> I'll give you this stuff. <laughs> Old books. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times. Do you want this? Do you want this? I'll say, oh, that's really pretty. Do you want it? <laughs> no, I don't want it. <laughs> I know it's pretty. It's cute. I don't want it. Do you travel to other, like, Easton or, or that, that area? No. No. First County. First County. And maybe a little at the Lancaster or Chester, but um, there are so many people that do this that, um, yeah, my traveling days were back when I did that at Alvernia, and I was never home. Now I'm home. We need to draw this to a close here. So, now, thank you so much for your
comments that were very helpful. So thanks again for You're the very welcome. Uh, next month, uh, another interesting uh, topic. Uh, Dale Graff, who was here, is going to be speaking on the use of psi in military intelligence. Now, Dale was uh, part of the uh, uh, United States government. In fact, he was the founder and director of Project Stargate. And uh, Dale, why don't you just tell us a little bit uh, uh, well, about the responsibility? Well, you know, it's going to be a very diverse topic. I'm going to be talking about human potential. I'm going to be talking about how we developed it within the government to uh, do things that you might call spying uh, in another country and how we were able to determine um, secret information um, that uh, otherwise was not known. So I'll be describing how we were able to locate missing airplanes, um, locate fugitives, and also identify um, the developments that were on, uh, going on in the Soviet Union before anybody else knew about it. So stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, and just a reminder, uh, if you are not on our email list and want to be to receive notices, please sign uh, the uh, forms here at the higher end of the table and write legibly so I can uh, enter your uh, name and email into our mailing list. And we also welcome your contribution to help defray uh, the expenses that we've had. I thank you very much for uh, your presence uh, this evening and uh, wish you uh, speak. And if you'd like an email from with tips and what up, um, clutter tips or whatever, you can put it on this one also. Great.